Today is North Carolina, and they are represented by head coach Courtney Banghart and student athletes Maria Gokdang and Alyssa Usby. Coach, if you would please make an opening statement. Ooh, where do we start? Um, obviously, the stars of the show are to my right, but uh, you know, just this team's been through a lot, um, obviously, and winning. Uh, I, I, I thought Michigan State was a little underseeded, but they were really good. Um, and I mean, sorry, over like the, their seed was too high for how good they were. So we knew we had a challenge on our hands, um, and we had two choices: you can outscore them, or you can try to stop them. I think a lot of people try to outscore them because of their potent offense. Um, but our guys just, we sort of said to know them is to defend them. Uh, and these guys totally locked into the defensive game plan so that we could uh, make really tough looks out of them. Um, so just a really good defensive effort. Um, I thought we set the tempo the way we needed to. Um, we had to play through our, we wanted to play through our bigs because of their size. Um, and that's easy to say and hard to do. And uh, just a huge credit to these two, Tiani, who really came in and um, gave us a, a lift on the interior. So uh, it's Maria's first NCAA tournament game. Um, and look what she did. And then Alyssa Usby is just a, just a noun at this point. So Alyssa Usby. With that, we'll open up for just uh, questions for just the student athletes at this time first. We'll go here in the middle front. Hi, Caroline with the DTH. This is for Alyssa. Um, when you grab that final rebound to officially seal the game, as well as working with Tiani to grab the second to last rebound, what was going through your mind and what were you feeling in that moment? Yeah, well, when Tiani and I were on the free throw line there, we knew that we had to come up with a rebound if in the case that we had missed. Um, and Deja doesn't miss very often, but I told her, be ready just in case. And so when Tiani got the first one, I was like, yes, perfect, let's do it again. And so when we got the second one, I was just like, I was just very proud of our girls because we fought the whole game and we earned this one. Let's go here in the front. Hold, please wait for the, use the microphone, please. Ariel Bonham, Target Tribune. Maria, you had more offensive rebounds than their entire team. <laughs> what, what was working for you inside? I mean, coming in, you, you knew that you had a height advantage, mm -hmm. and that would be something that you want to exploit. How did you do it? Yeah, definitely having my height advantage part of the game plan, knowing that um, they're gonna we're gonna shoot a lot of shots and um, we have to rebound. So using my body, getting into them, getting those rebounds was gonna be important. Um, kicking back out for open threes, I think that was really important for extra possessions and getting us up in the game. And right behind that. Yeah, Mitch North on WNT. Alyssa, it does feel like you guys followed the game plan to a T if it was to attack in the paint. I think 18 of your first 21 points in the game were in the paint. Um, when you get a game plan like that as someone who excels in the paint, how excited <laughs> are you to sort of attack this game? Oh, I'm so excited because then once we start pounding them in the paint in the beginning, like you pointed out, then I get to like kind of dissect and kind of find where they're trying to overcompensate. If they send a double, then Marie and I played really well out of doubles and finding our teammates when we were cutting to the basket. Uh, India had a great heads up play when I was diving to the basket. So I felt like we made them collapse a lot in the paint and that led to other openings. So I was definitely very excited um, that we were getting some more looks down there, but um, even more excited for the rest of the team because that means that we're gonna have some other openings that we can take advantage of as well. Right here in front. Hi, I'm Emma Moon with the Daily Tar Heel. Um, this is for Maria. Um, when we talked yesterday, um, with this being your first NCAA tournament, you said you wanted to do this for yourself. And um, how did that emotion play into today, and what does it feel like to successfully do that? Yeah, I think just mainly playing with confidence is something that uh, I struggled with before. But coming into the tournament, I know it was like a fresh start for us, and we could go on a really good run. If I show up, um, showing up for my teammates was going to be really important today. So that's kind of who I stepped up for. Um, and I'm glad that it, it turned out well. We got the win. So. Go in the middle. Alyssa, yesterday you talked about getting the team back to like its bread and butter, especially like making plays in transition. How did you see that kind of having an impact today? Yeah, I mean, I think it starts on the defensive end for us. When our defensive intensity is good, then we get live ball stops, which we love to run. So we'll get out wide, we'll rim run, and that just opens up so many more opportunities for us. And so I felt like we did a great job taking advantage of that in transition. But I do think it started on the defensive end, for sure. Let's go right here and then go around the side. Um, for Maria, again, <coughs> you kind of talked about um, you know struggling with confidence mm -hmm. throughout the season. In the last two weeks specifically um, with practice, I guess, is there a moment you can pinpoint when you felt that shift happen and your confidence grow? Um, I would say just hearing it from other, my teammates throughout the season that um, they believe in me, hearing from coaches that they trust me, believe in me. So just being able to instill that within myself was one of the major things. You know, in practice over the past couple of weeks, we've been really competitive, um, going at it with each other in the post, knowing that um, it's going to be a physical, really physical game down there. Um, so knowing that uh, and getting to it in practice was going to be important for us going to the tournament. 
Right here in front. Oh, well, so, uh, well, oh, for most of the season, you've had situations where you have a big lead and give it up. What were the emotions as that lead was coming down and then when you staved it off there at the end? Yeah, I mean, all teams that we play against are going to go on runs and momentum is going to shift. So I don't necessarily would identify it as us like giving up points or giving up a run. I would say that we're learning how to adjust to adversity and to the changes of the our opponent. So if they're making an adjustment on offense and they're like hitting the pot for the three, then we have to make the adjustment. I felt like tonight we were, um, or this morning, we were um, <laughs> quicker. We were quicker You're at making awesome. those adjustments. And so I think that's something that's really important for us, especially the ones inside the lines, to recognize those patterns and recognize those changes and be able to adjust on the fly. Other questions for student athletes? Seeing none, y'all can go back to the locker room. Okay, right. thank, thank you. you. Thanks, guys. Thank See you, you tomorrow. And if you want to follow them to the locker room, if, you're, if you want to go to the locker room, go ahead. Hi, guys. And raise your hand. We'll have questions for Coach Banghart at this point. Yeah, Coach, um, I think Michigan State has scored less than 60 points, like maybe four times this yeah. season or something like that. Um, what were the keys defensively? Yeah, I mean, we knew, gosh, they are a dangerous offensive team, and not just against um, whoever, right? They're scoring 90 against um, Iowa and Ohio State. And, um, and they do it two ways. They force turnovers, um, and then they're able to really get into the paint. Um, for themselves and others. They take, what, 700 or, no, 999 threes or twos uh, at the rim, take about 300 threes, and then about 100 of everything else, right? So we really wanted to close off um, and not give them all those layups. Um, so we, we wanted to force zero right. We wanted to make sure that we had a contest on 40. We wanted to make sure that we forced counters and didn't allow step throughs um, against certain guys. So really, it was to know them is to defend them was sort of our priority. Um, and also, we wanted to be active. I think we sometimes, understandably, that you could see it through the shifts of the game, um, we get tired, and I get it, right? That's what, we, that's what we're dealing with right now, right? So they're tired, and then we get reactive. And so it's just helping them understand that you still are going to be tired when you're defending, whether you're active or reactive. It's just active will probably lead to offense, right? Um, so just super proud of them. I mean, we shot 8 for 18 from the free throw line. You know, that's just... That's just a hard game to win in the tournament if you're, that's what you're going to shoot. Um, but they finally were able to find a way. So defensively to stop, how many did they end up with? Not even, yeah, not even 60. I mean, that's pretty remarkable. Go here in front. Can you, can you speak to the quality minutes off the bench for, by Tiani and also Bark, Barker and Poole's contributions off the bench? Yeah, Tiani was huge. I mean, I think her length, um, I thought she contested really well. We talked about walling up, didn't want to foul. They go to the free throw line a lot. Um, so we wanted to use her length. We said a wall up is a win. Right against her because she's so long and can elevate, um, and she did that to a T. I, you know, 40. She guarded her really well, um, so she was totally locked in to the game plan. You could tell, you know, um, you know. And she says, I've always said she's missed a lot of time, so she's still kind of finding her rhythm because of her injuries. Um, and you guys are getting a glimpse of what she could do for us. Um, and then Anya's so experienced, so she you can count on her. You don't need to like, you know, you just you need her when you need her. She's ready. Um, and then Sid, you know, the kid's a walk-on who, you know, we just gave a scholarship to. And um, the fact that she could give almost five minutes means it's five less minutes someone else had to play. Uh, so it was huge. Any minute that anyone off the bench can give us in a positive fashion helps our team a lot. Go here. Yeah, Maria kind of mentioned that coaches have worked to kind of install confidence within <laughs> yeah. her. And I was just wondering if you could kind of discuss mm -hmm. the conversations, um, especially over the last two weeks in preparation for the game and kind of installing that confidence in her. Uh, you know, we start with the idea that confidence comes from, you know, preparation and the work you put in, right? And she puts work in. So she's prepared, right? She puts in time outside of practice. She works on her skill work, you know, and so that's usually enough, right? And so it's reminding her that, you know, confidence comes from, from that. And then when you still struggle with it, it's helping her see that, um, that who else do you need to believe in you, right? You got your teammates and coaches who, um, who need you. And, and when you're in and your teammates, other teammates aren't, it's because they need you to play well, right? Um, and so, you know, it's a, it's a constant reminder to her that, like, otherwise I've made a recruiting mistake, and I don't try to make many of those, right? Um, and then also just that work is confidence comes from the work you put in, and she puts a lot of work in. Let's go in the middle here. How would you say that Alyssa played into your game plan for out-rebounding MSU today? Alyssa, uh, her relentlessness and, um, and pursuit has been hard to guard for everyone in our league. 
you know, what these guys finished fourth in the Big Ten, right? And, you know, I, we feel a sense of pride in the ACC that we've got a really deep conference, that there's a lot of teams that are really good and that we proved it today, right? Um, but part of that is because Alyssa does that all the time. She does it against the number one team in the ACC. She does it against the worst team in the ACC. She does it against the fourth team in the Big Ten. Um, what you guys saw from Alyssa is what I get to see literally every day. We always say practice the way you play. That was our key over the last 10 days or 14 days. It was we we're going to practice the way we we're going to play um, from a schematic and effort standpoint. And you look at Alyssa and she's just like, mm-hmm, because that's how she rolls. Right here in front. Was that first half some of the best basketball your team has played this season? Um, yeah, I think I thought we – there are other games which probably are irre irrelevant at this point, but um, for them in terms of the preparedness that they played with, right, and the confidence that they believed in um, to the game plan and then how they moved um, to our spots offensively, they sort of put all three of those things together. Um, so, yeah, I thought, you know, I thought it was, uh, we'll like watching the first half a little bit better than we'll like watching the second half. And when you play South Carolina the first time, Maria had big games. She's going to yeah. have to. What are you looking for her, assuming it's South Carolina? Outside yeah. Of you? I mean, gosh, I, 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 it's, I'm almost boring. I've spent so much time working on Michigan State. You know, I know some coaches prepare for all the teams at once, and I know my staff has been working at preparing for all the teams. That's not how I am, right? I focus on one game at a time because I ask my players to do that, right? And they hopefully respond to the leader um, that they choose. And so um, I know South Carolina from last year, and they've been great for women's game. Um, but in terms of the nuance of it, I'll, that's going to be good for me to talk about tomorrow. I don't, I don't know them as well as I need to right now. Graham Couch, the Lansing State Journal. Um, what, what, what's going through your mind when it, it gets a little tight there in the final minute? The three goes down, yeah. it's one. Like, what, what, what are you thinking right there? Yeah, I mean, so we missed a, a two free throws and gave up a three. Then we got it in and we turned it over. Um, and you know, it's, it's, you kind of look at them and say, okay, well, this is going to be more interesting than it needed to be, right? Um, but at that moment is not the time to have a teaching moment. That's the moment to, to lead them into the next one, right? Um, and so we, we were going to switch at the point of screens um, to force that. We wanted to have, if they were going to get a shot, it was going to be late. Uh, I thought we fouled 22 on design, um, and then they hit that three. So I think when you watch it back, you'll see that we had hands on them. Um, but, you know, when we wanted to advance it to get in the hands of our free throw shooters, and they left the backcourt open. So we put a fast Tiani there because she can dribble out of that. Um, so, you know, the end game, you know, I think we'll probably fast forward that part. I, I saw in the uh, – I mean, I know you know Robin pretty pretty well from what she said, Robin Freilich, and then Oh, God, yeah, yeah very much then, so. And then I saw you have a moment with Tori Osmond. I don't, do you know her? Yeah, Robin? I did a home visit with her when I was at Princeton. Okay. I've been in her home. Okay. Yep. So um, and I, well, I wanted her to run our one, right? So I just told her how proud I was of her, the career she's had, because she's really shifted positions, because that's what her team needs her to do. She's a great lead guard and a great facilitator who's had a great year, right? And she's getting to play the three, four right now, right? Um, and then also I got to hug our chancellor, who we are sharing uh, with Michigan State. Um, and so, you know, yeah, Robin and I, our families got together for ice cream last night, which I know sometimes people can say, oh, you're not competitive enough. Like, we both have three small – she has two, I got three small kids. They, need to, they see us compete all the time. Right, and they need to see that like the humanity and friendship matters, right? And so, um, you know, we I, I wanted to to hammer them today, and they wanted to hammer us, right? But that that doesn't mean the day before we can't act like um, our friendships and our kids can't see us that that we're going to compete like all we got, but we can also have a friendship. Is that like the whole family at the dairy stand, or what does that what does that look like? Well, we had to go to two spots. There's not enough ice cream spots here in Columbia. I'll tell you what. I was I even asked the first place. I said, "Where can you get ice cream?" And they were like, "I don't know." He was like 18. I'm like, "You're 18, man. You got to know where ice cream is." Uh, no, it was just we just you know the two families got together and they ended up playing some silly games at the table and it was an outdoor air. You know, I'm sure we were more of a mess to them than not than they were hoping. But you know, it's just. This business is hard, and it's because you're competing all the time. It's like your kids are seeing you compete. You're, you're just you're competing in all facets of the business, right? And so, when you have someone who you have great respect for and a good friendship to, you don't like playing them on game day. I'll tell you that, right? But I can't change who you are when it's not game day. Any other questions for coach? How about the ACC, y'all? <laughs>